All right, go and open your Bibles to uh, Deuteronomy chapter 30. Deuteronomy chapter 30. Uh, Deuteronomy chapter 30 and verse 11 is where we'll start at. Deuteronomy 11.30, I mean 30.11, I'm sorry. It says, For this commandment which I command thee this day, it is not hidden from thee, neither is it far off. Uh, let's have Jack House of some prayer. Are you guys be seated? Uh, Deuteronomy 30.11 For this commandment which I command thee this day uh, This is the kind of the part I'll be focusing on uh, It is not hidden from thee Neither is it far off uh, The top of my message this morning is It's not done in a corner And we'll get to that verse here in a little bit But I always just try to give out my title in the beginning uh, So the title is not done in a corner And if you kind of read that verse I think you guys can probably figure out what I'm trying to say uh, but it says it's not hidden from thee, neither is it far off. Uh, I feel like a lot of times we try to act like God doesn't tell us anything. Like we just run around here with our heads cut off. Like, oh, God, don't tell me nothing. I don't know what's going on. He's be nice if I knew something around here, wouldn't it? I feel like we have that complex at times in life because uh, we want to have an answer, and we expect to hear a voice like mine this morning telling you a direct answer. Uh, but that's not how it is. Uh, we're not Moses. I don't see God face to face. I'm not like Abraham. Uh, we go through it through the Bible. Uh, so the way you're going to be able to hear God's voice is where? In the Bible. Uh, so if you do have a problem, you do want some answers, where do you think you should be going to? You should be coming to church, reading your Bible every day. You shouldn't want to stop reading your Bible if you have a problem. Uh, but instead we have the complex of, well, I'm just going to be driving down the road and it's going to pop in my mind and that's the answer. Uh, that's how we usually approach a lot of things, is it's just, just going to come to my mind at some point. Uh, but I want to show you in Deuteronomy 30.11, that's not how it works. Uh, the Lord's not trying to hide anything from you, it's just you're not going to the right place. Deuteronomy 30.11 says, I'm not hiding it from you, I'm paraphrasing, because I don't want to see like I read the same verse over and over, but it's not hidden from thee, neither is it afar off. What's not afar off? The commandment. He's making things known what he wants. Uh, so... I always try to act not like I don't have all the answers because I don't. You guys know that. Uh, but I know God does. Amen. And God's going to tell me what I need to know. Uh, I'm not going to run around here with my head cut off not knowing what to do. Uh, God will tell me. He's not going to keep it from me. He's not hiding it from me. He's not going to keep it far from me. If I need to know something, what's He going to do? He'll tell me. Amen. That's the way I approach life. I feel like we make this life a lot harder than it seems. If I need to know something, the Lord will tell me. If not, I'm good to go. Until then, we'll be okay. Because uh, that verse right there says he's not going to hide it nor keep it far from you. Uh, the Lord's going to make it very clear as you read the Bible what he wants from you. Or what he expects from you out of this life. Uh, if you read that Bible cover to cover, it's going to be pretty self-explanatory if you actually pay attention to what the Lord wants from you. Uh, it's not going to be a lot of, I, want, I don't understand, I don't get that. And it's not going to be a lot of that. Uh, you'll be like, oh, okay, I know exactly what the Lord wants from me. Because he's not hiding that from you. He's not trying to do this in a corner where I don't even know there's a judgment seat of Christ coming. How many of you guys know that? There's a judgment seat of Christ not coming. How do I know that? Because the Lord told me. If the Lord didn't tell me, I wouldn't have no clue about it. But He told me that because He's not trying to hide it from me. He wants me to get rewards. He wants you guys to get rewards at the judgment seat of Christ. Uh, I wouldn't be saved if the Lord didn't tell me how to get saved. How did I get saved? Because He didn't hide it from me. He's not keeping all these things far off from me. Uh, so everything I need, the Lord's got it right there for me. I just got to take the time. And read it. Uh, it's not like, it's not like a, I don't even know how to word it, but you know, it's not like me or like you or like a teenage girl, you go up and talk to them, they're trying to hide their emotions. The Lord will tell you exactly how he feels, 
and exactly what he's going to do. So you're like, well, there's a verse in there where he hide his face. Yeah, he tells you he's going to hide his face. So then, once again, he's telling you what he's doing. Uh, so he's not doing anything in secret and where you don't know. Uh, so everything in this life you can know about, you just have to read the Bible. You just have to come to church. You just have to stay in your word of God. Because Deuteronomy 3.11 says, For this command which I command this day is not hidden from thee, neither is it afar off. You know what God wants from you is right there. It's not afar off from you. Uh, that should give you guys a lot of hope. Uh, that's what we're here to do. And it's not far from you guys. It's not hidden from you guys. Uh, that's what I like about preaching and teaching. I'm not up here trying to solve the Da Vinci Code where I'm like a math problem and this is hard. and It's not hard at all. Uh, even a guy like me can do it. It's very easy because nothing's hidden. It's not far off. I'm not having to pull this all together and like, man, this is pulling together this string and that string. Uh, no, the Lord makes it very easy for you because he wants you to know. Uh, like the Tommy message is not done in the closet. I'm not trying to sit here and figure out the U.S. government. If I try to explain that to you, I would struggle. Why? Because some things are done in the closet. I wouldn't be able to explain it like, I don't know. I couldn't tell you on that one. I have no clue. Uh, but the Lord, he's not trying to hide anything from you because he wants you to know it. Uh, so that should give you a lot of hope because whatever you want in this life, the Lord's got the answer for you. Uh, Lord, let's say you want to serve the Lord better. He's got the answers in there for you. It's not far away from you. It's not like you got to run this 5K mile up Mount Everest and maybe you'll finally get there. I don't know. Uh, you don't have to climb Mount Everest with the Lord because it's not far from you. Uh, so that should give you a lot of hope. When I read that verse, I'm like, I like that because I can't make it too far. Uh, I'm not that type of guy. I always try to make sure I get that across. I'm not the type of guy who's going to go climb Mount Everest. I couldn't make that. Uh, but with the Lord, he doesn't have to make it like that. He's not going to hide it from me. He's not going to keep it far from me. All I got to do is put forth a tiny little bit of effort and read and you can get it. Uh, so I'm trying to encourage you guys more to help you realize whatever you want to do in this life, pleasing the Lord, uh, being a good church member, uh, being a good servant of the Lord, being a good husband, being a good spouse, being a good parent. All those things aren't far away from us. Uh, it's not like this hard thing we have to try to find and seek, and maybe we'll find it, maybe we won't. The Lord says He's not going to hide it, and it's not far from us. Uh, I know we like to try to make it hard, uh, but coming to church on Sunday morning isn't hard. Uh, coming tonight is not hard. Uh, Wednesday night's not hard. Uh, reading your Bible every day really isn't hard. Your job asks a lot more from you uh, than this church ever will. I'm just being honest. I don't, I don't expect anybody in here to show up 40 hours this week. I don't expect that. If you did, I'd be like, what are you doing? Go spend time with your family. I don't want you here 40 hours this week. Leave me alone, right? Uh, but your job expects that. Uh, I don't expect you to take calls when you're not here or do stuff for me when you're not getting paid to do it. I don't expect anybody to do that, right? Because I pay you guys. I don't know if you guys know that or not. Uh, make sure Emily Jarvis gets your check in the mail if you haven't got it yet. It's probably just a financial problem, right? Uh, but no, I don't expect any of that stuff uh, more than your work does. And the Lord doesn't because He doesn't keep stuff far from you. Uh, your job can keep stuff far from you. Are you going to be a CEO of your company? Uh, not to be mean, you won't. Why? Because that's way too far off. Can you be a servant of the Lord? Yes, you can because that's not far off. Uh, can you be a good dad, a good spouse, a good church member? Yes, you can, because it's not far off. Uh, I just want to show you, unfortunately, though, after I said all that stuff, it gives guys like me hope, or it might give you hope, but then gets some people like, I still don't want to do it. Uh, hopefully that's not going to be you this morning. Uh, but as I'm kind of talking, look at Acts 26, 26. I'll show you how it's going to be put right in front of your face, and then you have to make the decision. Acts 26, 26. The Lord won't hide anything from you, but you still have a decision to make. Acts 26, 26. I'll just be honest, if you guys totally fail in this life with the Lord, that's going to be totally on you guys. Because uh, the Lord didn't make it hard. The Lord didn't keep a bunch of secrets. The Lord didn't try to make the same for you guys to fail. It's set up for you guys to succeed big time. Uh, so if you do fail, I don't have a lot of good excuses for you besides you just failed. Because uh, it's not far off and it's not hidden from you. How much easier could it get for us, right? I look at Acts 26, 26. I'll show you. Somebody knew it wasn't done in the closet, but he still rejected it. And I hope that's not going to be your response today. Uh, but Acts 26, 26 says, For the king knoweth of these things, before whom also I speak freely, for I am persuaded that none of these things are hidden from what? Him. For this thing was not done in a corner. Uh, nothing is hidden from you this morning. I believe everybody here knows how to get saved. And if you don't, I could show you, but I believe, let's just say, I believe everybody knows how to get saved. But guess what? It's still good to you if you decide to do it or not. 
I believe that everybody here believes it's the right thing to come to church, and that's what they should be doing, read their Bible every day, and that's not hidden from anybody in here. That, they know they should do that. But will you do it? I don't know. Uh, I really do think everybody in here has their eyes open and knows what to do, but will you do it or not? He says, For I am persuaded that none of these things are hidden from him, for this thing was not done in a corner. Jesus Christ didn't die on a cross in a corner, and nobody knows about it. The Bible says everybody knows about it. Everybody's got their chance at it. Uh, this King James Bible isn't hard to get. Uh, you probably go to Walmart. I don't, I'm assuming Walmart carries them. I'm just being slang talk. But you can go anywhere, basically, and get a King James Bible. It's not a hidden thing. I don't hide it from you. The government doesn't hide it from you. You can go get it wherever you want to. Uh, but will you? I don't know. You should. If you want it's not far off. I'll keep reading. These things are hidden from him. The same was not done in the corner. Verse 27. King Agrippa, believest thou the prophets? I know that thou believest. Then Agrippa said to Paul, Almost thou persuadest me to be what? You know everything, but are you really going to be a Christian? I don't know. Are you really going to come to church? Are you really going to read your Bible? Are you really going to pray? You know all those things, but are you going to do it? Uh, so basically, it's going to come down to you. You know everything you need to do, uh, but are you going to do it? Uh, so that's why I just don't want to act like this complex of, well, I just don't know what to do, and God never tells me what to do. Uh, everything has been revealed to us. It's just our job to do it or not. And then you, once you come to church and read your Bible, you'll start learning more and more. Uh, but he says there, I like that, I am persuaded that none of these things are hidden from him, for this thing was not done in a corner. Uh, that's why I don't have a lot of patience with people, because people like that play dumb, I learned in life. When somebody messes up, what do they do? Oh, I didn't know. Uh, no, you knew, you just didn't care. Uh, Akina Agrippa knew, he just didn't care. Everybody here this morning knows, you might not just care. So how do you explain me to care about you if you don't care about the Lord? I don't. No offense. Uh, that's why I think people kind of get confused, like, I'm just going to be your friend all throughout this whole life. Uh, no, I'm not. If you don't come to church and don't serve the Lord, I'm not going to be your friend. Because uh, I don't care. Because you don't care. Right? Does that make sense? I'm not being mean. I'm just saying, King Agrippa knew, but he still said no. Uh, you might know, but you still say no. Then what do you want me to do with you? All right? I mean, you know everything you need to know. You just ain't doing it. And if you need some motivational speaker, then go to YouTube, because there's plenty on there. There really is. I'm not the best guy at that anyway, so I don't know why you come to me to begin with on that. But I like that because I truly believe everybody here knows nothing's hidden from you. It's just, do you have enough, you could say guts or whatever you want to word it, do you have enough in you to actually care about the Lord and come to church, read your Bible and pray? That's going to be totally up to you. King Agrippa said what? Uh, no, I'm past. That almost persuaded me. That almost sounded really good how that life was right there for me how I could actually be a good servant Lord, how I could actually be a good spouse, how I could be a good parent. It's right there, but you know what? You almost persuade me, but I'm okay. Uh, so if you turn it down, I'm just going to be like, okay, I'm moving on with life because you knew what you did, and I know what you did, and there we sit, right? Uh, so always make sure uh, you can't play dumb when it comes to the Lord. You can't play dumb when it comes to, I don't know how to be a good father. You can't play dumb, I don't know how to be a good husband. I don't know how to be a good churchman. You can't play dumb. You can play dumb on some things, uh, maybe uh, algebra, I could play down there because I really don't know. I really couldn't tell you. Uh, but I could tell you how to be a good church member. I could tell you how to be a good servant of the Lord. How can I tell you that? If you just read the Bible, it tells you how to do it. Uh, so, so it will be up to you guys if you want to do it. Hopefully you're not like Agrippa. Hopefully you want to do it. Uh, that should be encouraging to you. And if you run to Agrippas, it's not the end of the world. Are they out there? Yes, the world is full of Agrippas who are almost persuaded to be a Christian, but they just didn't do it. Uh, look at Genesis 18, 17. I'll show you how the Lord's not going to hide stuff from you. He's going to tell you. Genesis 18, 17. Because if it was me, I would hide a lot of stuff from you guys. I'll be honest. Just like we do now, life. And today, does Miss Jones hide stuff from you guys? What do you think? Yes. Do you hide stuff from Miss Jones? What do you think? Yes. But the Lord won't do that to you. And like I said, well, what about those verses about he's going to hide his face? Well, he told you he's going to hide it. So there you go. Of, without me doing a whole in-depth study about it. Uh, Genesis 18, 17. Uh, Genesis 18, 17. Uh, Genesis 18, verse 17. It's the first book of your Bible. Sometimes the first book is the hardest to find. I'm not trying to be funny, but like trying to get to the page. I don't know if you guys are like that. Uh, Genesis 18, 17 says, And the Lord said, Shall I hide from Abraham that thing which I do? That's a very good question, isn't it? Why shouldn't the Lord hide some stuff from you? If it was me, I'd be like, yeah, you should hide that from the Lord. I would do that. But the Lord's not going to hide stuff 
And he says, And the Lord says, Shall I hide it from Abraham that thing which I do? If you keep reading, if you want to, uh, the Lord's going to show him some stuff. It's a bigger story. I'm not preaching the whole message. I'm just showing you there is an option where the Lord could hide some stuff from you, couldn't he? But he's not going to. Why would he not hide stuff from you? Because the Lord wants you to have that life that's not far off. He wants you to actually be a good servant of the Lord. He wants you to know what's going on. And he tells Abraham what's going on about uh, Sodom and Gomorrah and stuff, and they save Lot because of it. If not, do you think the Lord could just burn up Sodom and Gomorrah and not tell anybody and let everybody die in there, not save Lot or nobody? Could have if he wanted to. But what does the Lord do? He tells you some stuff he's going to do unless you adjust to it. He says, hey, I'm going to destroy this place. What you might want to do is get out of there. Hey, I see you're doing some sin that's going to destroy you. What you might want to do is do what? You might want to get out of there. I, said, I wish I had time to go through the whole thing because Abraham steps up and saves Lot because the Lord's just telling him what he's going to do. The Lord's telling you this morning what I'm going to do, and you have an option to do what? You have an option to get out of Sodom and Gomorrah if you want to. I think everybody kind of has heard of Sodom and Gomorrah, so I don't think I go over too much. He got burned up, but who got it out? Lot got out. Why did Lot get out? Because Abraham saved you can five, ten righteous men, and he went through the whole story. And all, Abraham just did that because why? It all started in verse 17, and the Lord says, Shall I hide from Abraham that thing which I do? And he didn't hide it from him. He told Abraham what he was going to do. And then he gives you an option to get out. Uh, if the Lord didn't tell you anything he was going to do, we'd be totally done for. We would be running with heads cut off and just running this stuff and get destroyed. I would have been destroying Son and Gomorrah a long time ago. I would have been destroying the world a long time ago. Uh, but the Lord warns you what he's going to do to this world, so what does that mean I can do? That means I can get out of this world and go to heaven. Amen. Kind of a nice little deal I got there. If the Lord hit for me, I'd be like, well, I think the United States, or I think the world's actually going to come together and pull us again, we'll be all right. Uh, but I know it's not true. Why? Because the Lord told me he's going to destroy it, and that means I go to heaven after that. Amen. I believe that, right? Yeah. Uh, look at Exodus 18.20 here. Exodus 18.20. The Lord doesn't have to show you anything, but he gives you a chance to get out. It's the point I'm trying to make for you. Exodus 18.20, if you don't know the story. And that's okay if you don't know the story. I don't expect everybody to know the stories. Uh, Exodus 18.20. I'll show you, show you some other stuff. I'm basically just making the point now the Lord shows you stuff. So we have no excuses by the end of this thing. And if you turn it down, you're just like King Agrippa. I almost persuade you. Because uh, believe it or not, that's what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to persuade you guys not to buy a car, not to buy a house. I don't get commission off nothing. I'm just trying to persuade you guys to serve the Lord more. Uh, Exodus 18.20 says, Now shall teach them ordinances and laws, and shall show them the way wherein they must walk, and the work that they must do. The Lord will show you the way that you must walk. It's not going to be hidden from you. If you get in your Bible, you will know exactly the way you're supposed to walk. Amen. It's not going to be a hidden thing. It's not something that's even far off. You guys found it. No offense. Is anybody here really smart? No. So that means it's not a far off, right? And you guys are on the path right now walking with the Lord. Uh, so it's not something that has to be so complicated. The Lord just shows you and you just do it. Because right. He'll show you the way you need to walk in. Uh, you keep, if you want to read that verse again, you can. I'm just going to kind of skip through some verses here, though, and then we'll close. Look at Deuteronomy. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy 1, 33. It would be a very hard thing to do to serve the Lord and not have a Bible. It would be a very hard thing to do to serve the Lord and expect the Lord to let you figure it out. Wouldn't that be a hard thing? But the Lord doesn't do that because we're set up to succeed down here. Amen. Now, I could preach a message. If that was the case, how it would be kind of hard, wouldn't it? If we didn't have no Bible and had no guidance. I'm like, I don't know what to do, guys. This is really hard. Uh, but we don't have that type of life, but I feel like sometimes we act like we do. It's like, are we forgetting we have a Bible? That's going to show you everything you need to know. Uh, Deuteronomy 1.33, it says, Who went in the way before you to search you out a place to pinch your tents and fire by night to do what? To show you by what way you should go in a cloud by day. The Lord will show you what way you need to go. It's not complicated. How is he going to show you? Uh, it's not far off from you. It's not hidden from you. It's right there in the Bible. The way you need to walk, the way you need to live this life is right there in the Bible. And I wish I could go over everything today. Uh, but I don't think you guys would appreciate it if I said open your Bibles and turn to Genesis 1-1 and finish in Revelation, would you? I'm assuming that wouldn't go over too well. Uh, so I'm just trying to get you guys interested in serving the Lord, and then he'll start answering all these questions for you. Uh, Deuteronomy 3.23. Deuteronomy 3.23. Just a few more and we'll close. Uh, Deuteronomy 3.23. Uh, Deuteronomy 3.23. 
And it says, And I besought the Lord at that time, saying, O Lord God, thou hast begun to show thy servant thy what? The Lord will show you his greatness. The Lord will show you how great he is. What do you have to do? You just got to do what verse 23 says, And I did what? I besought the Lord at that time. All you got to do is proceed to the Lord, talk to the Lord, and what he'll do? He'll show you his greatness. He's not going to leave you hanging. Because uh, it's not something that's afar off for you guys. It's not something that's hidden from you guys. The Lord will show you how great He really is. And you could go a lot of different ways with that. Because the Lord is great in a lot of different ways. Uh, you keep reading if you like. O Lord, Thou hast begun to show Thy servants Thy greatness and Thy mighty hand for what guys are in heaven or on earth that can do according to Thy works and according to Thy might. Uh, if somebody's not talking like that, you know they're not really in the Bible. You know they're not really coming to church. You know they really haven't searched for some answers. Because uh, that's the way you'll talk if the Lord ever shows that to you. And it's right there if you guys want to see it. He'll show you. It says you actually do have to beseech the Lord about some stuff. You do have to come to church. You do have to read your Bible. You do have to pray. You do have to have a relationship with Him to kind of get to know Him, don't you? Just like if you want to get to know me, you kind of have to come talk to me, wouldn't you? How many of you guys probably have no clue who I am? Well, it's because you haven't talked to me. Or vice versa, I haven't talked to you. Uh, you get to know me by talking to me. You get to know the Lord by talking to Him. And then you get to see how great He is. It would be the opposite for me. If you got to talk to me, it would be the opposite. You should, you'd see how bad I am. That's why we usually don't talk too much, right? Uh, but it's the opposite with the Lord. The more you talk to him, the more you see how great he is. The more you talk to me, the worse you see I am. Uh, and that's why you don't talk to me. Uh, Job 11.6. Uh, Job 11.6. It would be a very bad thing if you walked in and it's like, oh, Mitch is preaching today. I don't like him because you got to know me. Uh, that's why I try to keep that. Uh, but it's a very good thing when you walk in and the Lord, oh, I'm excited to see the Lord today. Uh, so I hope it's more like that for you. Uh, I'm walking in, I'm excited because the Lord's going to show me how great He is today, because I know Him. Uh, Job 11.6, I'll show you how He'll show you the secrets of wisdom, so you can know wisdom. Uh, Job 11.6, and that He would show thee the secrets of wisdom, that they are double to that which is. Know therefore that God exacteth of thee less than thy iniquity deserveth. That's some wisdom right there. What the Lord just show you? Show you some wisdom. What's wisdom? What's in the verse say? Know therefore that God exacts of thee less than thy iniquity deserveth. That's a pretty good start in life, isn't it? We deserve a lot worse, but we don't get that, do we? That's the secret of wisdom right there. And how do you know that? Because I just know that off the top of my head. Uh, no, because if it was me in the flesh, what I say? I got a lot worse than I deserve, because that's how we think, isn't it? I don't deserve this. Uh, but the Bible says right there, because the Lord showed us, therefore that God exacts thee less than thy iniquity deserveth. And if you can think like that, and you get wisdom like that in you, and the Lord shows you that, you live a lot happier of a life. Instead of being the victim all the time, like, oh, even that bad thing happened to me, I deserve a lot worse than that. Amen. Not, oh man, I can't believe that happened to me, I don't deserve that. I don't deserve to come listen to Miss Jones preach. In my mind, I would think that. But you guys must be really messed up people, because you do deserve it. You do deserve to come to church here. I know you think you could have went somewhere bigger and better, I know, but this is where the Lord's got you. This is where you deserve, so take up with the Lord, right? Uh, but Joel eleven six says that, and that he would show thee the secrets of wisdom, that there are double to that which is. Know therefore that God exacteth thee less than thy iniquity deserveth. That will help you get through a lot of stuff right there. Because uh, if I got what I really deserved, I wouldn't be up here, because then it would be really, life would be a drag then. It wouldn't be fun. Uh, so I know that I don't get all I deserve, and it can kind of help me be a better Christian than I am. It kind of helps me through life. And I don't want to keep talking, keep talking, because I think you guys are getting the point. But look at Psalm 78, verse 11. Here's a problem that we run across, though. Psalm 78, 11. Uh, you forget all that stuff. Psalm 78, 11. Uh, Psalms chapter 78 and verse 11. This is our tendency. Uh, you guys have been coming to church here for a while. Uh, so you guys aren't normal people on the street that know nothing. Uh, that makes me more comfortable around you. Uh, but at the same time, you guys have your own experiences with the Lord. You have your own experiences with God has showed you stuff. And then we have this tendency to do this right here. And Psalm 78 11 says, And forgot his works and his wonders that he had what? Showed them. It's very easy for me to get about a message I preached two years ago. That's easy for me to do. 
I couldn't preach all the messages I preached. But I should remember because the Lord showed me something that day. Amen. I should remember that. Because he didn't show people out there because they weren't here to show, be shown to them. Uh, so I try to hold it very special when the Lord shows me something because I don't want to forget that. I don't forget the Lord showed me something back here in December. Like, oh, I really appreciate that, Lord. Amen. I don't want to forget today where the Lord showed me something. But is that easy to do? Is it very easy to forget this day ever happened? That's kind of crazy. That's how our mind is. But I forget that December 15th, 2018 even happened. Like, well, that could have, the Lord could have shown me something great that day. I don't want to forget that. Uh, so I always try to make sure I remember what the Lord does for you. Because it's very easy to forget what He shows you. Uh, it's very easy for us because we come to church a lot. We read the Bible a lot. We have a relationship with the Lord a lot. Let's forget, oh, I forgot He showed me that five years ago. And now I forgot. And now I'm doing the same thing over again. Uh, you put yourself in a vicious cycle a lot, including myself, because we just simply forget the Lord already showed us that. And that's why you kind of notice we preach the same messages a lot, because we still failed it. That's, that's what we got to preach. We can't go into deep doctrine stuff, uh, because we're still stuck on coming to church and reading our Bible, right? Uh, why? Because we forgot, oh yeah, the, back in 2002, the Lord showed me I need to read my Bible, but I forgot. Uh, but it goes a lot deeper than that. I'm just trying to show you some easy stuff, and then you expound on it in your own mind. Uh, you guys do need to be thinking about the message throughout the week because the Lord shows you stuff every day, Amen. not just Sunday mornings, and He can expound on some stuff for you. Uh, but go ahead and look at Psalms 145, verse 18. We'll close. Psalms 145, verse 18. Because uh, you remember it in Deuteronomy 30, 11 says, it's not far from you, it's not hidden from you. That means it's what? It means it's close to you. If something's not far away from you, that means it's close. Uh, so the Lord is very close to you guys, and He's just waiting for you guys to want Him to show you some stuff. It's like a uh, show and tell. He's just waiting for the audience to come so He can show you how great He is and stuff. Uh, but a lot of people like Keen Agrippa don't show up because they're almost persuaded. Everything was showed to Keen Agrippa. He knew everything, yet he still said, I'm okay. Uh, Psalms 145, verse 18 says, The Lord is what? Nigh unto all that call upon Him, to all that call upon Him in truth. The Lord is very, 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 very close to you if you're calling upon Him in truth. Amen. He's not far off. Amen. Uh, I can't say a lot about people. Like I already told you earlier, me, I'm a far off. If you don't read your Bible and don't come to church, guess what? You're basically like dirt to me. You're a far off. I'm just being honest with you. Way out. Not the Lord, though. The Lord is very nigh, because He's not trying to hide anything from you. He's not trying to make this life very difficult on us. Like I said, we have the complex where it is difficult, uh, but if you remember back in Job, it said we get less than we deserve. So are you going to go through some trials in life? You are, but it's still less than you deserve. It's still easier than what it should have been on you. Uh, this life is going to be way easier than Miss Jones ever should have had. So if I keep that in mind, it's really pretty easy. That's not that bad. Uh, but I'll close with that, Psalms 145, 18. The Lord is nigh unto all that call upon Him, to all that call upon Him in truth. So now you can either be like King Agrippa and say, you know what, Mitch, you almost persuaded me. I like that. I like how it's not far off from me, but I'm just okay. I know I should. I know all the stuff about Christianity. I know everything about all that. I'm just okay. You can be like that, or you can be like a David, or you can be like a Moses, or you can be like Abraham. Like, no, I actually want that life. I'm going to go for that life. Uh, that would be totally up to you guys. Uh, but always know the thing's not done in a closet. Everybody knows there's a judgment seat of Christ coming. There's a great white throne judgment. Everybody knows there's something coming. Because uh, if you do, the creation even knows. Uh, but I don't want to get too uh, caught up in deep doctrine stuff. I don't call it deep doctrine, but doctrine stuff today. Uh, but you do know what you should do. I know what I should do. It's just up to us if we're going to do it or not. That's basically the main point of this message. We're not a bunch of chickens running around with their head cut off. If I miss church tonight, guess what? I know I should have been here. If I don't read my Bible yesterday or today, guess what? I know I should have done it. I'm not. Oh, I didn't know I should have done that. My bad. Uh, no, we know. Just admit, you almost persuaded me, but I'm okay. Just be honest about it, at least like King Agrippa was. Uh, but hopefully that's not you. Hopefully this message gave you some hope, some encouragement, the Lord, that you guys know that the Lord is trying to help you guys out, that it is all close for you. It's not something far off. It's not something that's unattainable. It is right there if you guys want it, all right? Uh, so go ahead, come up to the altar, do what Psalms 145.18 says, if you uh, want that type of life. Uh, but that's it for today. Amen. All right, church, listen to what the Lord is saying to you.
Not what you think or what you thought he was going to say to you. What did he say to you today? Quit being predisposed to what you think he's supposed to say to you. Listen to what he's trying to tell you today.